coming and welcome. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> welcome to the Lawrence High School You Lead with Love Summit. We're so excited to have you all here. Thank you. We know that some of you took like two hours, long highways to get you here. We really appreciate, especially the center table and the back table, taking their time to come out to the summit, especially on President's Day weekend. We're very excited. Um, we'd first like to start off by thanking the Board of Education, the Lawrence High School Administration, technology, as well as the janitorial staff for making this possible. We could not have done any of this without you. We really appreciate your help. So give a warm round of applause to them, especially this guy right here. As you know, this is the You Lead With Love Summit sponsored by student programs, and student programs each and every day inspires us to be leaders, teaches us about the pillars of philanthropy, as well as we inspire the organization and help make things possible. So just to start things off, we want to give a short video on the purpose of student programs and why we are here today. So. Operation Smell is like a great thing to get involved into. It just helps out so many people who are less fortunate than us. To me, it gives it gives kids a sense of hope. Bonnie is in school, and the kids all make fun of her because of the way she talks, because of her cleft palate. Um, and so you can see, actually, this here she has a black eye. Um, and this happened to her because she's being bullied because of the way she talks. It's just kind of heartbreaking because you know that they're just shunned and that they're sent home and that they are never going to get the opportunities that other people get. They might have a brilliant mind, but nobody will ever know because no one gave them a chance. And I think giving everyone a chance is something that's worth fighting for. It was like January of my fifth grade year, and my job was just kind of to play with the kids and get them ready for surgery. Um, I remember I went into one surgery and actually got to see them fix a cleft lip and cleft palate. Um, and I remember going out into post-op with them and seeing their parents and it was just like life-changing. It was so awesome. The reaction that the parents gave, like, it was, it was like amazing to see. It's so important at a middle school age um, and younger to understand how you fit into a community and how you can grow as a leader within that community. At a younger age, you can really like start to feel the impact and when you go through like experiences with helping um, people out, it just makes you want to go to the next level and just keep um, inspiring and keep helping people. If you get involved, then you can tell your, you can tell your parents and they, they will get involved and you can change someone's life. If you stay with it, like I guess if you do the final mile, then you really involved in the dodgeball tournament or go to like the leadership council. It's like a career path almost for Operation Smile. It, just, it can lead you so far. Getting involved in an organization like Operation Smile is a lifelong journey. Um, it gives you something to focus on and appreciate and understand how you can play a part. If we don't bring along this next generation, who's going to take care of those kids that we have left behind? There's a lot of people in the world that you don't realize need your help because they may be too afraid to ask for it or they may be too embarrassed to ask for it, but they do need your help and they are out there and they're always waiting for you and it's not that hard to go out there and help them. It just takes one step and then you're on your way. the enthusiasm, the energy, and the passion you saw in this video is what we're going to try and channel here today to inspire you to deepen your involvement in Operation Smile and continue to support the organization. Our club has done so recently through the Smile Back Community Initiative. You'll see donations under your table. Don't worry about them yet. That comes later, 1 o'clock. We'll talk all about that. Um, up until then, we have a great program. Your schedules are on your tables. You'll see we have activities, speakers, presentations, and everything in between. But in Operation Smile tradition, before we get started, we're going to do icebreakers because it's really important that we all start to connect as a region so that we can lead the most successful fundraisers coming up throughout the spring as New Jersey and Pennsylvania together. So Haley, take it away. Okay, guys, I'm Haley. If you didn't hear, Olivia. Hi, guys. Okay, so we're going to break up 
We're going to break up into four like families. So um, I'm just going to say where you're going to be going right now, but don't get up until I'm done speaking. Um, so family one is going to be right over here. So if you have a one on your name tag, that's where you're going to be going. And family two is going to be like in front of the doors. And then family three is going to be over there by the windows. And family four is going to be over there. And so before you guys go to your spots, the team leaders need to come up here. But everyone else, yeah, you can go to where you need to go right now. Breakers. Um, and now that we know each other all a little better, we're going to get started with some presentations. Um, as most of you know, OpSmile is currently revolutionizing and moving away from strictly providing just cleft lip and palate repairs to providing a surgical platform for all. This initiative is represented through the Until We Heal and Barriers to Care campaign Operation Smile is currently working on. So to help you learn more about the organization, their platform, and student programs, please welcome New Jersey Regional Leadership Council members, Naya McGowan and Skylar Trost. Did I? I'm sorry, I pronounced it wrong. How do you pronounce it, Haley? Neem, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. All right, and Pennsylvania Regional Leadership uh, Council member, Marco Murphy. You guys can come up. Hi guys, I'm Margo Murphy. I'm Skylar Trost. And I'm Neve McGowan. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit more about Operation Smile. Thanks for coming out. First of all, we wanna to talk to you about what Operation Smile is in general. So Operation Smile is an international children's medical organization that performs free surgeries for cleft lips, cleft palates, and other facial deformities. It also gives post-operative and ongoing treatment and establishes year-round treatment care centers to give long-term care for dental health, speech therapy, nutrition, and psychology, which kind of makes operations special because we go above and beyond for our patients and it really attracts a lot of people to the organization for the extent of the work we do. So it was founded by Drs. Bill and Kathy McGee after their mission trip to the Philippines. I actually got involved because my dad and Dr. McGee went to the same high school. So when they were able to help a large number of patients but recognized they couldn't help everyone, they decided to create this organization because they realized they had to go back. And so more than 60 countries now are involved, like Brazil, China, Egypt, Honduras, India, Nicaragua, Philippines, and Vietnam. And in April, I'm going on a mission with Abby to Mexico. So while we're there, we're going to be working to complete this mission statement for Operation Smile and help to mobilize a world of generous hearts to heal children's smiles and transform lives across the globe. So a lot of times people with cleft lips and cleft palates are like, shunned in society, are experiencing a lot of difficulties with simple things like eating and drinking. So a lot of times if they're in a country that doesn't really understand why these deformities have occurred. They are ridiculed and isolated. Sometimes they can't go to school. So that's really a big part of why fixing cleft lips and cleft palates, even though it might look like a superficial sort of operation, because of it's your, it's your like face, but it's actually a really important mission. And not only to take care of it, but to do it in a safe and effective way. And I mean, I know for myself, they've definitely impacted my life, and my dad is a doctor, and I can definitely say they've impacted his, so impacting the lives of their volunteers, too. All right, so this kind of shows you where we're active in more than those 60 countries, and including everyone here, so. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about surgical care. So currently, two billion people lack access to any to access to any surgical care, 
and only 4% of an estimated 324 million surgical procedures performed each year go to the um, poorest third of the global population. And um, Operation Smile, what they do is they establish centers to ensure that they can continue round care for patients who require like more care than they can give on one medical mission. Okay, so... Does anybody know what that campaign is called or what the theme of the ISLC this is? This year is? Come on, we talked about it. North High School, Barriers to... Yeah. Kelly, give Kelly a prize. Going back to the care centers, one of the big missions of the ISLC, which we can talk about later in student programs, the International Student Leadership Conference for 2014 in Ireland, was to raise money for a care center that was built in Paraguay. And at ISLC, they divide everyone up into teams, and it was a really competitive effort to make this like dream come true. And now it's official and working. Okay, so um, now I'm going to talk to you about cleft lips and cleft palates. Okay, cleft lips and palates. So um, I don't know if you guys can see the picture. That's what they look like. So the normal lip, obviously there's no holes in the normal palate. The left uni unilateral cleft lip, um, that's when they have just one hole and in their mouth or their palate. And then the bilateral is when there is two. So um, they can occur on either side of the mouth and a person can have both. Either way, these facial deformities threaten the lives of children because every three minutes, a child is born with a cleft lip or palate and consequently has twice the odds of dying before his or her first birthday. Okay, so what causes cleft lips and, or palates? So the exact cause is unknown. So Operation Smile is pi pioneering research. Um, it is known that facial deformities are developed during pregnancy and are a combination of genetic and environmental factors. So that's like drugs, illnesses, and malnutrition. Um, however, most parents attribute the deformities to curses, magic, and religion because they have a lack of education. Okay. So some of the pro problems they cause are difficulty breathing, eating, hearing, or speaking correctly. And this is also like a big problem for babies um, when they're feeding from their mothers because when they breastfeed, they can't properly um, latch on to their mother's breasts, so they have troubles breath, trouble breath, breastfeeding. Um, they can uh, ear disease and dental problems can also arise from that, and they are often shunned because parents cannot afford or access medical care, and um, there is a lack of access to education. Hello. So I'm going to talk about student programs and how Operation Smile really allows students to get involved in many, many different ways. Um, just being here today is basically being a part of Operation Smile student programs. <laughs> okay, so why student programs? Well, over oh, around the world, um, Operation Smile has about 900 clubs. We're one of them. Lawrence is a huge club here, obviously. Um, Basically, what, what do we do as clubs? Anyone know what we do as clubs? Pretty obvious. Raise money and awareness. Okay, I wanted to give someone a prize, sorry. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you a prize, you probably have a lot here. Good job, great, so we raise money. And we work to spread awareness by educating every, like students like you on what Operation Smile is and why we're so important. Um, so, Operation Smile educates students like us on four basic pillars. Education, awareness, leadership, and service. Um, it's kind of important for us to understand this because we're the future of Operation Smile and like we're the ones who are gonna carry the organization when we get older because those people working there aren't gonna be there forever. So it's really important for us to be the leaders of our, of our generation. Okay. So, does anyone know the first step in getting involved in student programs besides being a part of a club? ISLC. 
Sí, yes. And what does ISLC stand for? Yes, way to go. So, okay. So, who has been to ISLC this summer or previously? Whoa. Okay. Well, as you know, I went to Orange County, California last year. This year, we're going to San Diego University in San Diego for a week, which is like one of our longest. Um, we basically, this is, gives children an opportunity to like spread cultural awareness and also like grow up as, as individuals by learning from others. Like we have speakers who discuss overcoming obstacles and define what it means to make a difference. And there's, they're there to basically inspire us and let us know that it's possible to overcome obstacles and make a difference in the world. Okay, and every year we have a, campa a campaign, like Olivia said, we have the Until We Heal campaign, and basically it says that we will not stop until we heal two billion people who lack access to safe surgery and well-timed surgical care. And it all starts with that one person. So like, when we raise money and we raise $240, you're like, oh, that's only one person surgery. But it actually makes a huge, huge difference, and it all starts with that one person. Okay, so don't stop at the ISLC. There's many more, much more you can do. Like, so when you're in ISLC, some of you may know this, they have many, like, breakout sessions and they have these classes where you, where you learn what to do after ISLC. So basically you become a regional leadership council like us up here and Olivia and all these, this table over here. And basically we get together on a state level and we discuss how to spread awareness in our state, like for New Jersey and Marco, Pennsylvania. Also the National Le Leadership Council where Dan is a part of. Dan. <laughs> super cool because he represents Operative Smile on a more of a national level. Um, you can also fundraise and have events like this that spreads awareness and educates students. Also, there's many service opportunities by doing service projects. And the most, most fun, I think, is mission training and mission opportunities. So what exactly is the role of a student on a mission? Basically, you have to fill out an application. It's a tad extensive, but it's really necessary. You make like a video, you write like a few essays, I think. You get recommendations, because they really want to like weed out the leaders of our generation and, and pick a good representative for a mission. And if you're chosen, you get to go either to Norfolk, Virginia at headquarters, or in the summer, you can go to ISLC and stay a little bit longer and learn how to educate students when you're on a mission. And you, ba you educate them on five basic modules, burn care prevention, oral re rehydration, dental hygiene, and basic health and nutrition. So our job as a student is to go to a uh, country internationally and educate students on basic health care that they lack in their countries. So, if you're interested in doing that, you have to just go to this website. It's very simple. <laughs> and so if you want to take a screenshot or something. Um, so that's basically, that's basically our presentation for you. We've still got some prizes left over, so I'm not sure if anyone wants to answer some questions. Does anyone know what the modules that we teach to the children on these missions are, or how many there are. Tim. Can you name? Name as many as you can. Can anyone name any of the four pillars that educate uh, that Operation Smile tries to teach us students? Service. Okay. Do, Do I have any others? Do I have any others? Yeah. Yes. Um, money. Oh no, but we we try to raise money. I guess raising awareness. I guess that's money. Okay, give her a, a prize because that was good. <laughs> Education. And leadership, yes, over here. What is your name? This is Casey. Casey knows the five, the four pillars. 
Oh, also, another one last question. Yeah, we have a bunch of prizes. How many countries does Operation Smile go to? Over 60, congratulations, you won a prize. Okay, that concludes our thing, our introduction, our presentation. Thank you for having us. Peace, love, op, smile. <laughs> okay, good job, guys. Okay, so they touched a bit on the ISLC, but that's what, the, oh, this is kind of distracting. I just realized I was wearing that still. But, um, so the next people coming up are gonna talk more about the ISLC. And as you all know, this is a conference held in the summer each year to inspire op smilers to become better leaders and like become more involved in, you know, the clubs and like organization. So the RLC has been dedicated this year to increasing New Jersey's participation in the ISLC. So hopefully we'll see you all there. And I know like a lot of people here are going to the ISLC this year, so that's exciting. And then, um, however, if you do not know much about it, then the next people coming up are going to tell you about it. So I'm just going to like introduce your names and you can walk up. So, um, and they're all going to the ISLC this year. So Gabriella Araneta, <laughs> Victoria Reznikov and Grace Reznikov, twins obviously, <laughs> Casey Rue and Margaret Toole. And so here, you guys can take it away. <laughs> Thanks Kelly. Okay, so we're doing a presentation on ISLC. Okay, so this is the visual timeline of what your journey will look like if you continue to go through with Operation Smile. So the first step is a leadership summit. The next one is in Pennsylvania on April 17th, and it's pretty much like this one you are at right now. And <laughs> the next step is bringing spirit to your club to spread the word and awareness about what you learned from that summit so that you can have your club getting involved even more. And then after that, you can go to ISLC in the summer where you join 500 students to learn how to make a difference in the world and we'll get into more depth about that later. And after that, you have the possibility to attend mission training like they said before, where you send in your application, do a video and go through that whole process. And then you can go in either the winter or the summer. The summer one is wherever the ISLC will be and the winter one is usually in Virginia Beach. And then after that, you can become a regional or a national leader, like those, Dan, yeah, okay. So what is ISLC? ISLC helps students develop and strengthen their leadership skills and personal character. Um, there's over 27 countries that are represented at the conference, so um, you get to see people and meet people that you never see before with like different backgrounds and cultures. Um, you get to hear speakers talk about um, leadership and their obstacles that they've had to overcome and what it means to make an impact and to continue making an impact. Okay, so each year, right, Operation Smile hosts the ISLC and it's always at a different university around the world. So this there's been at College of William and Mary, Georgetown University, Princeton University, University of Limerick. And then last year was at Chapman University, and now, as you know, this year it will be at San Diego. Okay, so this year is the 25th annual ISLC. As we said before, it's going to be in San Diego, which is really exciting. So who can attend? So students that are 15 to 22, but if you just completed your freshman year, you can also apply to go. And they also, like if you're in college, obviously. So when and where, it's in California in July, right after summer mission training, so how much? So the registration fee is $800, but you put down $200 to reserve your spot because many people wanna go because it's an amazing time. So that includes lodging, meals, and all other costs, except like if you wanna go, like they had Jamba Juice last year, like they don't pay for that, you have to bring your own money. And you have to pay for your travel to get there, but they will pick you up from the airport. Okay, so when people arrive from all over the world, they come by plane or car, and the staff gets the participant wherever they need to be, from wherever they need to be. And the check-in involves receiving Operation Smile merchandise, like some of the stuff you have here, like the water bottles, 
pins and all that stuff. And then after that is the opening ceremony. All the staff members are introduced and then you hear a speech from Dr. McGee, who is the founder. And you, then you have a flag ceremony where peop, one person from each country represents with the flag and they go around. It's really nice. And then after that, you meet your team and your team leaders. And then you get to bond with them, do activities, and you learn leadership qualities from them. And then you have a dance to celebrate. So here's a video to show <laughs> ISLC in a little, yeah, in a review. Yeah. <laughs> Operation Smile. I've never been in a place where there are so many talented speakers and I have access to hear all of them. It's been a uh, life-changing experience for me. I've made so many new friends from uh, a variety of different countries. We love Operation Smile! Operation Memory Smile! We made it 2020 to break down the barriers, participate, collaborate, innovate. In this rocks we have 12 crowns that all of our students have been making. Basically what we're doing is we're making these to give to kids on missions so that way they can play with them before their surgery. somewhere. Okay, like I said, the keynote speakers are important at ISLC. So last year, these are two. Uh, Shane Feldman, who was the founder of Count Me In, which is a nonprofit organization which helps students find their passions by helping the community and others. Uh, another uh, influential speaker was Lizzie Velasquez, and she was born with a disease called Neon. <laughs> okay, a disease. And she's an anti anti bullying activist, and she talks about leadership and all the obstacles she encountered and how she made an impact and continues to make an impact. Uh, she also is an author. Pretty cool. Yeah, same thing with these two Terry Hawkins and Katie Naylor. Uh, they are both really amazing, and all of them are honestly so inspiring and great. And Terry Hawkins was talking about positivity and making everything in the positive form. I think he was like, did you call it like Flip Man or something? It was great. Anyway, and Katie Myler, she has an organization called More Than Me, where she would go in uh, to countries during the Ebola epidemic, and she would just, oh, and she started a school there for girls. And she went in, and despite the risks and uh, all of her obstacles, she did an amazing thing. So at ISLC, you also have regional breakout sessions. And it's a great way to meet other students who live around you so that you can plan regional events and learn about the opportunities specific to your region. And everyone is supportive. So you meet RLCs and two NLCs dedicated to making your region the best. So New Jersey is obviously the best. And this is also a great time to ask questions about starting your own club to collaborate with other people about having regional fundraisers. Okay, so this is the first party you have, and it's called the International Party or the I Party. 
And essentially you just bring things from your town or your country and it's great because there's over 27 countries coming so you can see new things and meet new people and it's really fun and something great was the pizza afterwards that was amazing. So the service project that we did at last year's ISLC was making the felt crowns and everyone designed them and made it their own and made them personal for everyone. And so that was a really good time because that's one of the more important aspects of the ISLC is to make these for the missions that students will be going to on their missions in the future. And so like all of the materials are brought in by the students themselves and it's not necessarily required but it's suggested that everyone brings it and it's definitely like an important part of the ISLC to, to do this. So the most fun part about ISLC is that you have teams and you play games with them. So this, the bottom picture is my team and our color was camouflage and it's a day where you, it's ISLC filled with ruthless competition and fierce battles and everyone dresses in their team colors and pit it against the other team so like you play against them and chants are full of dance moves and lip syncing to the songs. And I remember like my team, our chant was like shark bait ooh ha ha. I don't know why, but it was really funny. So it's really fun. So the, the last day is pretty sad for everyone because you know we're all from different countries and different places and we don't, we're obviously not gonna see each other every day. It's really sad, uh, but I can say that especially through like technology now like you become really close friends with people like I became really good friends with these girls from Paraguay and we talk every single day and they like send us pictures like when they had the South American some um, conference that was really fun down in Peru and yeah so th this actually for Yuli with love we have this quote that's up here it's called love is making someone else is your problem we have these on your sh on our shirts you can go get one how many countries were represented at this year's ISLC? 27. Yay. Okay. Okay. So the mission process. So after so you can't apply to a mission unless you've gone to the ISLC. So after the ISLC you have to make this decision. If you wanna apply, you don't have to. And yeah. So the next one is in the summer and applications are due on Monday. And oh, so we want to show you um, our, la he was a senior last year. He was one of our team leaders. He, he was like secretary of operations last year and he's now a freshman in Canada. Yes. And th this video almost made me cry, so. Crowded hallways of the loneliest places Outcasts and rebels Or anyone who just dares to be different You've been trying for so long To find out where your place is But in their narrow minds There's no room for anyone Dares to do something different. Oh, but listen for a minute.
them quiet looks like weakness But you don't have to fight it Cause you're strong enough to win without war Every heart has a rhythm Let yours be out so loudly That everyone can hear Yeah, I promise you don't need to hide it anymore Oh, and never be afraid of doing something more opportunities so you don't have to stop at ISLC I feel like we've been frequently mentioning this but a really good opportunity is with the Re uh, Regional Leadership Council and the National Leadership Council so once you've been to ISLC so, okay. so there's okay so for the National Leadership Council that's self-explanatory you promote organization at a national level but I think Oh, a really impactful one is the RLC because like all these people like we're here we're throwing summits we're raising awareness and I think that's one of the most important things you can do okay so okay. so uh, so as I said the RLC works uh, and organizes events there was this really cool event that some of us at our club we went and we got out of school it was pretty great so we went to the Times Square, New York, New Jersey um, for the Donate a Photo event, which was really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, we could not see any of the ambassadors, but that is okay. We took so many photos, and the, there's this app that you guys can download, and we all know how much we use social media and how many pictures we take. And with one photo, we can donate a dollar to Operation Smile or any organization that Johnson & Johnson has that you can donate but it's a really easy and a really important thing to do and there's an also thing and also another thing we have the new jersey operation smile connection gala which i know a bunch of people here we went there and we volunteered and we help people give their money to us and this video it just it's, it just shows you how like really cool that okay so for the times square we were on tv and i'm just going to show you like the first 20 seconds of this video. It's pretty, it's pretty great. In a given day, how many pictures do you take on your phone at least a 
couple. Now you're, you're shooting pictures all day long of that of, thing. Of this ring, which we'll be showing you here soon enough. Yeah. But thanks to Johnson & Johnson, you can now use their Donate a Photo app to use those photos to support three charities with the help of some celebrities. They just launched the effort in New York. Our like five seconds of fame, it was pretty great. <laughs> so yeah, like just going. <laughs> so that just shows you like, who knows, like people now know that there's student volunteers for Operation Smile if they didn't already know because we were on the TV for five seconds. <laughs> just because um, we keep mentioning the RLC and the NLC, that doesn't mean that's the only opportunity you can just be a club member here helping out with all of these regional events or just helping out raise money those are still important roles that you can do it doesn't mean that you necessarily need a title in order to be a greater part of operation smile so just remember that because <laughs> okay so thanks for listening to our technical difficulties and our five seconds of fame. So does anyone have any more questions about ISLC? I'm sure we explained everything, but in case. Thank you, guys. So thank you, um, Casey and Abby. Sorry. Um, so, as we said, after the ISOC, you will have the opportunity, opportunity to go on an Operation Smile medical mission. So, we have two people here. We have Dan Soraco. Okay. He goes to Oratory Preparatory School and he's also a member of the National Leadership uh, Council. And then we have Julia and she goes to Mount St. Mary and she is on the Re Regional Leadership Council. So, Okay, so they have both attended on missions and they're going to present about it now. So their deep involvement in this club allows them to go to Jordan and Peru where they want. So without further ado, please welcome Dan and Julia. Hi everybody, um, I'm really excited to be here today and to talk about my mission. Um, so as she said, I'm Julia, I'm 17 years old and I go to Mount St. Mary Academy. Hello everyone, my name is Dan. I am a senior at Oratory. Okay, so without further ado, um, so I went last May to Lima, Peru. I was there for about 10, 11 days. Um, so here above you can see a little boy. He had a cleft lip and that little girl had a cleft palate. So as you all probably know by now, Operation Smile their missions include sending volunteers, medical and non-medical, to developing countries to give free cleft lip and cleft palate surgeries to children in need. So as you can see to the left is a little girl. She has an obvious cleft lip. And the little boy to the right, his name was Leonardo. He had been the previous year for a cleft lip repair. And this was his second time coming to have surgery for his cleft palate. So as you all know by now, the first step is to go to ISLC, and then you apply for mission training, and then once you get in, you either go to Virginia for the mission training or to the ISLC if you're going for the summer. So to the left, that's a photo of when I went. I went in Limerick, Ireland at ISLC, and to the right, that is my mission um, kind of group in Virginia. So there's about 30, 30, 35 of us there, and it was a lot of fun. So now I'm just going to speak about the roles on a mission. So it's really important that you're comfortable and confident when talking to these families. A lot of them don't know basic health care modules, and it's vital information that is going to help them. So the five modules taught are basic health care, burn care and prevention, oral rehydration, dental hygiene, and nutrition. 
So the photo here, I'm teaching the kids how to brush their teeth. A lot of the kids in Peru had really bad cavities, and some of them actually had to have teeth removed during their surgery because the cavities were so bad that it would just make them even their mouths even sicker. So, um, so that's me teaching them. They had a lot of fun with it. Oh, I think I just skipped one. So here's it continued. So this is me teaching them how to wash their hands and also um, teaching them burn care. So a lot of the parents were really interested as well, and they wanted to be a part of this. So the first two days are the screening days. So this is where people from all over the country come to get evaluated by doctors, nurses, to see if they're healthy enough to have surgery. So they make sure that they're healthy, because if they're sick, then obviously they can't um, have surgery. But they also check the severity. So the more severe a cleft lip or cleft palate is, the higher they have a chance of getting the surgery. So as you can see, to the left is a photo of all the families and patients waiting. And to the right, that photo is them going through the whole screening process. So there's about 12 tents they have to go through. And some families have to wait up to 8 or 12 hours just to go through the whole process. So here are some more photos. Um, so when I'm not teaching the modules, I was keeping the kids occupied. A lot of them came with younger siblings. So it's a really long, long day. And just to help them go through the process, playing with them is a lot of fun. Um, they love bubbles, balloons. Um, my school made um, sock puppets, actually. So I brought them, and they were playing with them. It's, it was a lot of fun. So while the third day, that's when the parents find out if their child is having surgery or not. So it's really chaotic and emotional. So while that is happening, the whole team has a team day. So my team day, we went to a horse show. Um, it was really cool. It was really interesting. The horses were kind of like dancing. Um, um, so another thing I want to add about uh, screening day is that it's a very hectic day. Uh, it's a very stressful day for a lot of the kids. They're going to be seeing doctors, surgeons, you know, they'll be confused uh, looking at all the medical equipment. Uh, they'll be having their blood taken. So uh, it's a very, uh, you know, stressful day for the kids. So what you want to make sure you want to do is keep, your, keep their minds occupied with games, you know, toys, puzzles. Uh, I know my mission partner and I, we brought a soccer ball and we started a soccer game in the uh, parking lot at the hospital. We got all the kids involved, and that was just a great way for them to uh, kind of take off their mind and their fears and anxiety for what's going to be uh, when they're getting surgery and what they're going to be experiencing later on. And just to add, it's also really hectic for the doctors, the nurses. So I remember I just ran, kept running back and forth getting all these things signed for, signed for the doctors. So any way you can help when you're not teaching the modules, it's really important to do so. So the next five days are surgery week, and they are very stressful as well. Um, so during these five days, the patients receive the surgery, and they stay um, just for a couple days after just to make sure that they're healthy and they're doing OK. So about 15 to 20 surgeries are received a day, depending on the mission you're on. I had a team of five surgeons working. So here is the little kind of unit where you play with the children beforehand, make sure that they're OK to like leave without their parents and you kind of distract them and make them kind of more comfortable with the settings. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of photos. And then here are some more photos. Um, to the left is all the nurses and doctors and we're with a patient and his family. And to the right is one of my favorite patients, Homius. He was about seven years old and this was his second operation. He first came in 2014 for a cleft lip and now he was going to get a palate. So he just came with his mom, and he was a little nervous, obviously, but you know we bonded, and I speak a little Spanish, so I really got to get to know him. And then here's some more photos. That's Homius with a little camera. He's going around taking photos of all the patients. The top right photo is me in the operating room, actually. And on the bottom, that is one of the volunteers with the patient. And surgery is very interesting because you want to make sure that you're uh, you know, always available for anything. Like, for example, our, uh, the first two days of surgery, uh, there, we were really short on local volunteers. So my mission partner and I actually weren't in child life. We actually were in post-op helping the nurses um, you know, take care of the kids like, right after they come out of the uh, operating room. And then uh, basically escorting them to their hospital rooms. So 
really got to see like their parents' first reactions when they saw their kid after surgery, which is definitely something that I'll never forget seeing uh, seeing their faces after that. And so just always remember to you know keep yourself available and be open to anything. I was very you know nervous when they're like Dan, Jake, you're going into post op to help. I didn't know anything about post op, and by the end of the day, I learned a lot. Yeah, he definitely makes a really good point. Um, so now I'm just going to show you guys my mission video. It's pretty quick. Um, just kind of an overview and some photos and videos. Hope when you take that jump, you don't feel the fall. Hope when the water rises, you build a wall. Hope when the crowd screams out, screaming your mission was absolutely amazing. I loved it so much. And for a lot of these kids, it was the first time where they were in a community where they weren't getting ridiculed. They were accepted. And to be a part of that, it was amazing. Um, so thank you guys for listening. All right. Uh, hey, guys. So as, as you know, Julie went to Peru. I actually went to Amman, Jordan, uh, April of last year. And uh, it was easily like one of the most incredible experiences I've ever uh, seen in my entire life. I think Jordan was an interesting uh, mission site because while you're getting these kids, you know, that are from Jordan who are born with facial deformities, we also had a lot of refugees, namely uh, Syria and Palestine. So I got to learn a lot of uh, people's stories from there. For example, uh, this child, Hassan, who I formed a bit of a bond with, uh, I was able to talk with his mom for a little bit because she spoke uh, uh, good enough English that we could have a conversation. And what I learned is that uh, they're Syrian refugees. Um, back when Hassan was born, uh, his mom, no one in their family had heard of cleft lips or cleft palates, so they had no idea uh, what to expect when they saw him for the first time. Uh, but the family was just so angry that he was born with a cleft that 
they didn't let uh, Hassan's mother see your child for an entire month. And uh, as a mother, you could imagine that would be a very, very stressful time, a uh, very stressful thing to experience. Uh, and actually, his father was basically going to uh, give Hassan away to an orphanage. Basically, he didn't want to deal with this uh, you know, child with a cleft. So Hassan's mother actually, just her and Hassan, uh, left Syria, moved to Jordan, and luckily uh, that he was able to receive surgery. Uh, it was, it's definitely a story that I will uh, never forget. And uh, another child here, uh, her name's Rayada. Uh, I didn't really get to talk to her mom as much, but I heard other people talking about her story. Uh, back in 2012, Rayada and her mother Shem were from Syria as well. And back in 2012, their home fell under attack. They lived in a very, uh, very dangerous area of Syria. So they as well fled Syria into Jordan. Luckily, Rayada was able to get surgery. And it's just, you know, I guess I want to close with um, admission training. You know, you learn about the modules learn about you know what you're gonna teach on a mission but I don't think they can really prepare you for um, the people you're gonna meet and the stories you're gonna be able to hear like the ones I was able to experience thank you um, any questions anybody okay so Dan is just gonna show his video now
Um, I highly, highly recommend applying for a mission. It's an amazing experience. Congratulations to all those who have been assigned a mission. And a side note, I've brought a lot of supplies, coloring books, bubbles, crayons. So I will, at the end of the mission, be handing that out outside for all those who are going on a mission in the upcoming spring. So thank you, guys. So thank you, Dan and Julia, again, for your presentation um, as a thank you gift. To remember your you lead with love experience. You're welcome. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so now we will take a short break until 11.45. Break ends at 11.45, so please be back in here for the Valentine's Day themed activities. Ms. Stockton has been to well over 20 missions and nearly 20 mission sites and is an excellent student sponsor. So let's all give her a round of applause. My name is Christine and this is where my teaching career was here at Lawrence High School. And we started the Operation Smile Club in, before you were born, in the mid 80s. We were one of the first. And we grew and grew and grew and grew. And as of the time that I retired, um, over 200 of our students here at Lawrence and also in Hopewell and some in Princeton have been overseas with Operation Smile. Also, we went to every single student leadership conference. And I believe we're still going now. Correct? Yeah, we had like 20, 25 kids signed up for Florida. Oh, that's good. That's really, 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 really good. And this area in New Jersey is a prime, prime, wonderful place for Operation Smile. A lot of it started here. In fact, the basics started here. Bill and Kathy McGee were born here. So that's the beginning. Now, you as students are the core and you are the heart of Operation Smile. It is your enthusiasm, it is your caring, it is your compassion, and it's your drive which makes the difference. Be it on a mission, on a day like today, at an Operation Smile event, or just having dinner around your dinner, dining room table with your family. Your enthusiasm is infectious, and that's a good infection to have. So what we want to talk today, I'm going to tell you what a student sponsor does. But more than that, I want to talk about you and what you've become because of Operation Smile. Now, student sponsor. Basically, I'm into logistics and what happens after mission training. Um, students are assigned to a mission sponsor. And we get together. First thing I do, call parents, call the students if I'm not there at that training. And we get down to the nitty gritty. We discuss our dates. We ex discuss expectations. We discuss how to pack, we discuss what to eat, we discuss what kind of money to take, all these tiny little details that have to be addressed. And what we're going to do as far as presentations, the modules, in some countries some work and some don't, depending on the site. We always do the hand washing, we always do dental, we always do burn prevention and burn care. In some cases, ORT is a bit too confusing to try to translate. And many times, it is our nurses who do the ORT. And also, in nutrition, we all would like to have three solid meals a day. We know that's not true in most places in the world. In fact, if you have a bowl of rice, 
today and you have a bowl of rice the next day, no matter anyone telling you that you should have fruits and vegetables, it just doesn't happen. So rather than giving a list of what you should have, we list what they can do within their own diets. Now, also, I am in touch with a teacher in the site area, my counterpart. That teacher is going to get students from her schools. And when we arrive, she will have an entire itinerary set up for us because every day during surgery week, we go out to schools and orphanages and community centers. And what we do is those modules and our students from the Operation Smile groups and the teachers' students, the hometown people, they are translators and they equal parts. And another big thing for student programs here, we maybe screen sometimes 300, 500 people, depends on the size of the site. And then surgery, 100, sometimes up to 300. When the student teams go out for five days doing three to four presentations a day, last year in Isabella, in the um, Philippines, we touched 2,500 people. That's a lot. And that's what the students did. 2,500 people. And that doesn't include the modules that were done during screening or at the hospital. So your importance is massive. But more important than that, every single one of you, whether you are on a mission or not on a mission, you are an op smiler. And you care. You know how to talk about it. We are here for you lead. We are also here for we teach. And we teach everybody, anywhere, anyhow. We'll do it. OK? So let's start with some basics. And I know you're all experts on this. First, I want you to slightly open your mouth, just slightly. I want you to leave your tongue down in the bottom of your mouth and don't let it move, OK? Now, you have a cleft lip. You cannot move your lips either, OK? Uh, I want you to try and talk without doing any of that. Did you just understand what I said? I want you to try to talk with your tongue in the bottom of your mouth, your lips not moving at all. Go ahead. Try to say something. Try your name. What we have here is a failure to communicate. And it is a shock for people to understand that. And people who have disabilities, people who are different, one thing that is very, very common is they don't know what to do. They're on the outside looking in all the time because people stare at them, they point at them, they giggle at them. And actually, those are natural human reactions because most people don't know what to do. But their head and their heart are wishing, gosh, could I have a friend somewhere out there that cares about me, who sees me beyond my facial disability? And people, Lawrence, you've heard me speak about this before. It is and a gift for any of you to be able to look at someone who is different, physically different, um, 
walks differently, talks differently, um, doesn't seem to notice you, is incredibly shy. Have you ever seen anybody walking down the hall at school hugging the wall? These are people, for whatever reason, they're different. And people pick on them, and they bully them. Or they point at them, and they make fun of them. And can you imagine if that was you? And the fact is that working with Operation Smile opens your eyes to the fact that you can make a difference in someone else's life in a snap. And if I come up to you and you're Mr. Grumpy, oh, you're too easy. Um, who looks grumpy? Okay, I I've heard about you. You've got a rep. Okay. Now, well, you're just kind of, you know, like, hmm. All right. And if I walk up to you and I look you right in the eye and I smile, you can't help but smile back. <laughs> so what I want you to do is kind of team up with somebody next to you, whatever. One of you try to be, look them right in the eye and then just smile at them and see what happens. And what a beautiful noise that is. <laughs> now imagine if you do this at school, or walking down the street, or at the mall, and there is somebody there who's very much alone. And all you have to do on your way by is look at them, smile, say hi if you want, and you have just made their day. You have given them a gift because somebody cares about me. Someone smiled at me. Someone was nice to me. And their day is made. You gave them a present. You made them a gift and they will not forget you. So my challenge to you, I want you to do that as many times a day as you can. You don't have to tell anybody. It's something that's private. It's between you, the smiler, and the smiley. Because you can light up a life with the simple passing. This does not mean you're going to be the best of friends, but you have made someone's day complete. Please, please give it a try. No one has to know, but the person who they, you take on will. And it can be a senior citizen. It can be a little child. It doesn't matter. You could smile at me. I like that very much. Okay? But can you imagine no one ever paying attention to you because you have a big freckle on your nose. Well, that's what it's like for so many of our Operation Smile people. They don't have friends. They can't go to school. They can't get married. They can't have a job. And it's because of the way they look it's not because of what's here or what's here. And in 40 minutes, 40 minutes, that can be taken away. And suddenly, I can go to school. I can have friends. I can play on a team. That's pretty special. So what you are doing is creating happy endings. Every time you talk to somebody about Operation Smile, that's what we're about. It's not just an overseas mission. It's a daily action.
action. It's a feeling. It's a gut thing. That you have such power, incredible power, to be able to influence someone else's life. But also know so much about this marvelous organization that you know what a difference it can make. You've seen it. You've seen the videos. You've seen the change in lives, how it does change not only the patient, but the family and the community. This is a good thing. And you all need to give yourself a hand now. But I would really, really like to thank you on behalf of tens of thousands of people around the world who have been touched by what you have done, by what you say, by how you share. You are amazing. Please keep up the good work. Please, please never forget Operation Smile can go with you everywhere and give somebody a good smile today if possible. That night isn't expecting it, actually. So have a great time. Happy Valentine's Day. Lots of hearts. And uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Bye. Thank you so much. You're so inspirational to all of us. I, honestly, I love hearing you speak every time you come. So this is a gift just to remember your you lead. Thank you so much. Yeah, go find it. Now we are going to transition into a project my club has been working on um, for the past four months. So starting in November, we reached out to a lot of local organizations and got a response from the Girl Scouts, the Church of St. Anne's, the Lawrence Senior Center, and the Montgomery and Hopewell uh, Operation Smile Clubs in the region. And we went and gave presentations, I think, one weekend we gave like three presentations to St. Anne's, raised a lot of awareness, and from there, they went ahead and um, started putting together smile bags. So if anyone's ever put together smile bags, you know it's not the easiest process, but out of it, we were able to get, as of yesterday, 305 smile bags and just short of 2,000 donations. So. <laughs> So all of those donations are under your tables. This is gonna be a bit of a hectic process, but what we want you to do is clear off the center of your table as much as possible and put the donations on top of your table. 